Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel and the um, May 21st, 1983 edition of uh, the Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling Review Series. We get over 20, almost 2100 um, audios available for your listening pleasure. This is a highlight film from the six-man package or six-man match at a local arena uh, to open the show. Gary Hart, Great Kabuki. And Magic Dragon versus Jimmy Valiant, uh, Bugs and Girl, and um, Lucas Jones. Basically, the match boils down, and it's just a couple of minutes, but boils down to a basic brawl with the baby faces getting a victory. Then we see uh, Jones coming in with Bugs and Girl. They basically are supportive of each other and the need to get rid of Gary Hart and Kabuki. Greg Valentine is out next. Greg Valentine is, at least considering himself to be the greatest uh, U.S. champion of all time. I don't know that there are other people who agree. Greg Valentine against Ken Hall. I don't know. I think this is maybe the second or third time I've seen Hall since starting the Mid-Atlantic Series. Also, we are going to be doing some independent stuff coming up. Anyway, uh, Greg Valentine managing to get a couple of... Um, Arm ringers, arm bars, and the like on Hall takes him down, kind of a divorce court style arm breaker, and also hits the hammer over the top rope there. Uh, Valentine then, of course, kind of cinches up on his man, doesn't get everything he wants, but gets enough. And Greg Valentine also manages to get everything going in his general direction uh, and gets the uh, hammer and the figure four, and basically he says he'll never see Piper again. The idea that Piper would return annoys him. We go to Piper's house. Piper is sitting on his couch in kind of an easy chair uh, next to his wife and uh, uh, baby, I believe, daughter. And ultimately, Valentine says that because of the damage to Piper, that Piper can't provide for his family any longer and that Valentine is the greatest uh, U.S. champion of all time. There's also hype for the return of Wahoo McDaniel. Wahoo McDaniel being interviewed by Mean Gene Okerlund from the AWA returning uh, to the area. And it's rare you see the AWA, who is not an NWA affiliate, sending in footage for a upcoming returning uh, AWA star. So the idea of Wahoo McDaniel coming back is interesting to the Carolinas because of his history through the 70s and such with the promotion. Then we see a modified tag match going forward here. Um, we see One Man Gang and uh, Rick McCord versus, uh, or One Man Gang and uh, um, Gene Kaniski versus uh, Vinny Valentino and uh, Rene Goulet. Rene Goulet comes in and doesn't do a heck of a lot. Kind of cinches up on his man. Uh, gang is obviously one man gang still continuing to be a pretty big deal. Uh, gang and Kaniski, both members of the House of Humberdink, with Kaniski being the most recent member of the group. Uh, a little bit of brawling attempted. Uh, McCord bounces around. Of course, McCord later becomes Austin Idol in the weeks and months to come. Idol manages a couple of uh, drop kicks under the chin, and the team of Gang and Kaniski gets the victory. Within a matter of a couple of weeks, they're tag team champions, which is a pretty major deal. Uh, House of um, House of Humperdinck are still a pretty big deal. They're still doing the uh, slam gimmick with the one-man gang. He's offering now $7,500 to anybody that slams him, including going back to the feud with the uh, Boogie Woogie Man Jimmy Valiant as a concept. And we continue to kind of go in that general direction. I believe by this point, um, some other people have left uh, the area, and so we kind of get some new people in. Jim Nelson and Jack Briscoe in the ring, um, and ultimately we lead to me grabbing my phone again, which seems to never stop ringing. We'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. And again, the uh, Briscoes thing looks to be them trying to lay out, um, you know. Jim Nelson who, and injure him. Uh, there is a Briscoe's level promo, Jack Briscoe primarily, talking about how they believe that they are going to be the tag team champions. They really want to be the Mid Atlantic tag team champions, and uh, Briscoe wasn't, or um, Nelson, Jim Nelson wasn't going to continue to be 
a guy who was in a strong position there anyway. The laying out of Jim Nelson, pretty big deal, and again, the heel aspect to it, uh, also a big deal. Um, Jimmy Valiant gets bonked into the announcer's table there. Then we go to a promo with the great Kabuki and Magic Dragon. Basically, Gary Hart says that no one is giving them a fair shot. We also see Kabuki practicing martial arts in the middle of the jungle, so to speak. Um, and uh, Hart talks about uh, his stable not being given a fair shot. Uh, Dick Slater, speaking of feeling he's been unfairly categorized, uh, has been run out of Mid-Atlantic, been signed, been suspended. He finds all of this unfair. He says that uh, the people that are doing this to him should... Uh, uh, have to pay some level of consequence. Then we go to Joe Ledoux against um, his momentary opponent, which is Rick Connor. Rick Connor, relative newcomer to the enhancement talent ranks. I think he's been here a time or two before, but not very commonly. Uh, and uh, Ledoux manages to uh, punch kick his way. Uh, Connor tries, you know, basic maneuvers uh, and doesn't really get too far. Um, go behind Hammerlock's punches and kicks from Ledoux. Ledoux still managing to kind of be in the House of Humperdinck, uh, you know, run. His TV, TV matches aren't exactly the best, and he manages to hit a, um, hit a almost modified spine buster. We also see, uh, Paul Jones out, and he's offering to give away a picture of himself, 25 words or less, and basically, over the next several weeks, he continues to kind of, uh, taunt the female fans with that. The idea behind it is he is heavily praised for his efforts. Then we go to Dory Funk Jr., who is still your Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Champion, and Jake Roberts. Interesting tag team, Funk and Roberts against uh, uh, Keith Larson and Masafuchi. Uh, decent enough match. Uh, Roberts stays on, and he stays in with, the, with Larson. They do hammerlock switches and all of that. Uh, Dory Funk Jr. comes in. Uh, Manages to get a couple uppercuts in. Fuji and uh, Funk uh, hit some stuff. And then we see, ultimately, that Roberts manages to hit a couple of forearms. Uh, Larson and Funk comes back in. Larson, a better-than-average enhancement talent, who I honestly think gets a little under undersold there. Uh, Funk rolls his man through. Interesting that Dory Funk Jr. as a middle-length champion doesn't have a really strong feud going into April. Uh, also interesting that Starcade 83 is less than six months away, and we really don't know where that's going terribly much either. In any event, um, the match probably goes longer than it should have. Paul Jones talks about uh, giving he, both of his men the opportunity to be the best in the wrestling industry and also plugs the contest once again. Uh, he says that they're basically like a family and that his men are allowed to focus on professional wrestling more so than the average person is at this time. Anyway, we close with that. We'll be back with more right after this.